Good morning. We are on page 417 in the Mittler Rebbe's Mimer, Memoria Admoram Tzkai, Breshis, the Sefer Breshis, Tafyud Zion 417, which is the source and, fun, and source text of a big part of the end of Hemshechayim Bey's, which we concluded, but as we discussed, there are many points and themes that need to be unpacked and developed that the Rebbe Rashab never ended up actual writing. So let's sum up where we're at. So we've come to the conclusion of a section that began on page 402. I mean, 15 pages back, the question of what ner mitzvah means and what teda er, ner mitzvah, teda er, that diuk, that mitzvah is compared to candle and teda to light, which seems to suggest, as he says, mashma from that, shabaloi er, the teda ner, Earlier he said it's a nair, it's a candle, it's a wick and a an oil, but it doesn't have light. Oil. Here he's saying even more, ain't a nickel a nair, which obviously means because it does say nair mitzvah, he means a nair doluk. That would be how I would explain. And a the purpose of a nair, like he said earlier, ain't a klum. Just to have a wick and oil and it doesn't get ignited is missing the main thing. So when you say nair mitzvah tereir. It seems as it's belay is it it's not a net, meaning a lit a lit, lit candle. Even though mitzvahs we learned is they're rooted in Atmus Rotsan Vatainug Hapashut, all the way in the core, a mitzvah is God's will. It's not some God forbid any incidental secondary thing. It's part of God's core will and ple- and des- uh, desire and pleasure, Tainuk, Hapashut, which means seamless in the highest levels. And he calls that level of Galgalta, the skull, which is higher than Chach Mistima, as we learned earlier. And yet it's still called Ner Mitzvah compared to the Teira Er and the Tafke Teira. Aval Er, the Teira, he says, Magia reaches even higher than that. So at the end of the day, Rotson and Tainuk are still, it's, it's God's desire. Rotson is God's Tainuk. There's God himself, which is the one that has the Ratzin and the Tainuk, so higher than Ratzin and Tainuk, now he addresses the level of Keser. Now you can say the same thing as before, the Simtsum, the Ratzin and Tainuk. Here he's saying it's Keser. Keser can be the microcosm. After the Simtsum, Keser can also refer to the higher level. Before the Simtsum, here most likely he's talking about after the Simtsum, like he said earlier, that Keser is a very high level, and yet it's not the highest, and that's why it's darkened, Called them ilus in the in, in in face of its the cause of causes. So it's taka tarach amudeir tarach as in keser two hundred six hundred and twenty pillars of light, but there's something higher than that, and that's the muzba atzmus that's higher than dots of the of keser, or like he's going to say a little further down, but teira shabal peh the moir of teira, not just oir but also moir. So teira teira already is oir. But especially Teresh Shabbat goes to the Moir, which is the luminary, the source of light. So, and that's because the way he explained it, because Mishum the Eid the Teda Megale Kol Helam Becheshech, because the Eid of Teda does something that nothing else does. It reveals. It's a revealing the the divine revelation, in the fullest sense of the word, like we learned the Eid Atzmi, meaning that it's not subject to any concealment. And therefore, it irradiates and pierces all cheshul v'helam. The mitzvahs, he says, doesn't say the mitzvahs are subject to helam. He doesn't say that explicitly, but he clearly says, the mitzvahs, ba'asiya lamato, b'dvarim guashimim, they come down lamato, and therefore there is, even though the mitzvah itself is God's will, but revelation, to say divine revelation, you could say is the divine revelation of what God wants. But it's not a divine revelation of the full capacity of what we call Gili Elikus in a revealed way, in the fullest sense of the word, like he's saying. Like I explained yesterday at length what that means, Oyer. So in other words, it's not just about being Mamshik the Etzem here. We want the Etzem to be Begili. To be Mamshik the Etzem, you could do a mitzvah. And then and you have the Etzem. Just like we say, Ish Pasha, a simple Jew. Uh, like the story with the Baal Shem Tev, when the boy was didn't know how to pray, 
and he just cried out, Kukuriku, a rooster's call, and that pierced the heavens even more than the prayers of all the tzaddikim. Because his sincerity and his pshittas, his insincerity, his innocence, goes all the way to that side. But still, you're not going to say that we should all just be in du kukuriku and not learn how to dab or learn how to learn teda. Like he says afterwards, lo yamor chosid. So obviously there's an etzam there even in someone who doesn't have any giluyim. But the goal is that it should be giluyim. That's why we have a teda. That's why we learn teda. And we understand what God wants. We don't just fulfill the mitzvahs. So even though mitzvah fulfillment of a mitzvah is a big thing, you know, my soika, he said that earlier, the action is the main thing. But we also say we don't just want the action, we want all the gili that comes with the action. So just like Tater needs mitzvahs, mitzvahs needs Tater. And that's what he's adding here, the Tater ad. So he says, so, okay, so it's Megala kol helen v'cheshech. Ulekach gama isa mitzvah kavona. And that's why even when someone does a mitzvah with kavona, and a kavona, as we know, is like the neshama of the mitzvah. It's the intention. You're not just doing action. If you're just doing pure action, there's no intention, you could say, okay, there's no gili at all there, except the action itself. But you say there's also kavona. He says, So in other words, you'll have the kavona of the mitzvah. So there is some gili, but to have what he calls gili eide and self atzme, that's teda. Because teda is where the Abishta basically uh, inserted himself. Like when we say, anon nafsi ksovis yehovis, anoichi, is that I, Hashem says, I have invested, I have inserted, I have uh, engraved my soul, I've written my soul into these words, which is the teda. You don't say that on anything else. Nothing else is that way. When it comes to a mitzvah, you don't say, anon nafsi ksovis yehovis, you say that God is Ratzon is in that mitzvah. So in other words, there's something about Teda that expresses, like we spoke about the blueprint, or even beyond being a blueprint, it just expresses divine divine energy, expresses divine, divine intentions, the purpose. Like when we say that we not just do a mitzvah, but we also know God, we understand God. To know and to feel. These are all experiences of relationships that more than just based on actions. Action, you can do something for the servant can fulfill their master's desire and fulfill, and and realize and actu- and actualize it without having any feelings. Doesn't have to have a feeling of love. Doesn't have to understand the master, the king. But here, it's Tera offers us the ability to have a full experience. That's why we say Yem Chasenose is that in Tera. By Tera, we became. It was a betrothal, it was a marriage, partnership. And not only that, like we learned with Teda Shabbat Peh, we don't just learn the Teda to know what God says, we also are involved in the process of developing Teda to be applying it to doing the mitzvahs themselves. In other words, we're part of the process when you say Teda Shabbat Peh, you say Tamid HaChacham, they're, they're delving into, they're immersing themselves, exerting themselves, studying the Teda, arguing out all the points, back and forth, all the details, in order not just to know what the, the with God, not just like we learn, not just like he said, like an Eved in Teda Ed, the Alter Rebbe says, not just like a servant who's l- reading the decrees of the king, but someone that's like a, like he's like a Melech, who reads his own decrees, but he reads it like a partner, like he said, Masnisa Malkasa, like a Malkasa, a king and a queen, not just like a servant. That's why he brought about Rabbi Yehuda. In other words, they learned the Teda as their partners in it, and learning it on the level like together with the king, so to speak, and helping develop. In and in, in, in Arian Bezi explained that the ministers, the king consults and discusses with the ministers who help him write the laws. Now, we don't mean helping write the actual mitzvahs is Hashem's mitzvahs, but the development of those mitzvahs and the interpretation is absolutely very much part of our process of the human being below that learns Teda and develops it and applies it and so on according to the methodology that God gave us. So all that is in Teda, not in mitzvahs. So Ika Gili Eide in Sof, who be'er the Chochman the Teda Dafke, liyez b'chin es atzmir se primi shalei mamash. And that's so. So there's the Chochma Shebezeh, Chochma Teda, being the core and, and the primis of Hashem himself. So as much as we can, so to speak, God can manifest in some, in Gili, is Teda. And even more than Gili, because we said also it reveals all the secrets, even the deepest hidden things the Tate also reveals because it's not subject to Helen, because it's like we learned Ayin Ramad's bottom. 
Anashim Shutim. Let me, I'm going to finish the paragraph summing up and then we'll go back to where we left off. I know some of you have questions and give you all the opportunity to ask. So let me just sum, finish the summation. Then he says, that's why it says, Talmud Keneged Kulam, Keneged Kolam Mitzvahs. This is, this is a good explanation why. Besides the fact that Teda is the source for mitzvahs, it's also Talmud Eid Keneged Kulam because this element of Teda Eid is Dafkin Teda and that's Keneged Kolam Mitzvahs. And he now gives the example of Chochmah. Chochmah Sheberesh. In the human body, we have many limbs and organs. We have many faculties. But there's only one central nervous system. There's only one controlling force, and that's the mind. The mind is the captain of the ship. Everything runs through the mind. So the movements of the body, the nerves, the nervous system, as I said, and in general, the mind tells the body what to do. So Chochmah Sheberesh is he, he compares it to that. Now, not just that it tells it, it also is the source of vitality, of oil and chayis, light or energy and vitality. It vitalizes all the vodim. God forbid, if the mind, if there's a, a stroke, I don't want to use a negative example, but if for some reason the chachma is connect, disconnected from the rest of the limbs, there won't be any oil v'chayis bevodim klah. So the same thing with mitzvahs and teda. Teda is the chachma shebereish, meaning here chachma, but he means here chachma deeper than chachma that's lower than keser. He means here chachma all the way up to chachma stema and even deeper because it goes all the way up. It's basically where God manifests his entire being. Like we learned that chachma is a keli for Eden Sof because of its bittel. So Eden Sof shaded the chachma, like he explains also in Tanya in chapter 18 and then later in chapter 35. In different places. So just like Teh, so Teh is the Meichin, Mitzvahs are the Ramach Evarim. They're the 248 limbs. So below Eir the Teh, Eim Bam Gilea Lekus Atzmei. They don't have Gilea Lekus, Gilea Lekus, meaning vitality. Can there be an action, a dry, hollow action? You can do an act. But to be vitalized is through Teh to Eir. And we say, V'chai Behem, V'chai Yachayim, that you shall live, Chayis. Chay means vitality. From the source of life, only bemtsoyes er the teira er. Only with the with the the bemtsoyes with the interface or the intermediary. And bemtsoyes means through by a teira er is how that energy enters into v'chay behem into the mitzvahs, making them come alive. And that's why we say loy amoritz chosid the mitzvahs. That loy amoritz you need to have teira. Amoritz is the opposite. And then he adds the final piece about Chachmet Teda Shabbat Peh. But Kol Zay, he says, is Chachmet Teda Shabbat Peh. Clearly he's talking about Teda Eh, refers to all of Teda. But Chachmet Teda Shabbat Peh drives the point home, because there it's taking the Teda Eh of Teda Shabbat Sav, Shemavada Lechesh Chagas, and now drawing it into illuminating the, the coarse and crass darkness of Klippa Snega, which that brings the Teda, that Sharsha, the root of doing that, doesn't just go to the Teda Eir of the written Teda of Eir Yashar, but it goes all the way to Atmis Hamoyer, the Ein Sof. Shemeir Be'er the Chachma the Teda, that radiates within the Eir Chachma of Teda. That's what Teda Shwapa adds when you go into those details, as we learned, and into the darkness, and there you clarify. You're then reaching to the, the purpose itself, which is Seif Maisib Machshal. He said, No, it's Chalosim from that the beginning is wedged in the end. What is the end? The Teda Shabbat Peh, that you have a working document that can be implemented. But Teda Shabbat Peh is not there yet. Dafke. That's the Iker Eir the Teir, Hameir Bener Mitzvah. That's the primary Eir of Teda that we've been discussing that radiates within the Ner, the candle of the Mitzvah. The Prate Prate is the details that Teda Shabbat Peh offers, which tells us the details of each Mitzvah, what to do specifically. Whereas in Teda Shabbat Sav, like we learned earlier, it's general and, and in some and very concise and cryptic. And this does chagas to transform the dark, the coarse darkness into light. And that's why Talmud Dafka may be the So it's true. The goal is to bring it to Maisa, Mitzvahs. But it's Dafka Talmud that may be the Because Talmud has the power to bring it into that place, to, to transform it, to, to be able to do achieve its goal. In, in the action to transform this physical world, which is what a mitzvah does, but it's with the power 
Talmud Gadol Shemevi De Maise. Not just to know what to do, but also to have that Oyer power, the power of Gilead Lekus. Because again, it take away Teda. So yes, we could have a world that's aligned with God, but only in action. Everyone's doing what they have to do. Basically, nature is that way. Nature and the animal kingdom all follow orders. They never, they never waver from God's plan. But to say they bring Gilead Lekus in the world, no. They, they're like a program, like robots. So they follow the program. Teira Eir illuminates the world and transforms it into what we're calling here Dira B'Tachtenim, like we speak, Dira Lei is Baruch B'Tachtenim, a Dira B'Golei. See, this emphasizes, the Rebbe brings it very often, that it should be a, a home. A home is not just that you're fulfilling what God wants. A home means that God is comfortable in living and in, in dwelling in this world, like a Mishkan. It's more than just you're doing the mitzvahs. You're actually, it's a place where God is comfortable like he was in the beginning of creation, but obviously Mashiach comes will be far greater and more than that. So that's the summation of what we learned. I went through the text here. I explained it obviously yesterday with more elaboration from the Sikha in Vayakel Chelek Tazayin, Vayigash Chelek Chofhei, and some other places that the Rebbe discusses this idea of Giluyim and Etzem. And as I said yesterday, we um, I, I had to go um, and leave the class, so please if anybody has any questions or wants to take, or maybe things were clarified, whatever, I'm happy to respond or address anything that may come up here. How are Nashim Shutim are getting this without Torah? You know the Baal Shem with Nashim Shutim. I just, I just explained the length. And yet, uh, the, is there any mile of a Talmud Chachim over Ish Pashat? Yes and no. The Baal Shem said they the Baal Shem Tov did not advocate Amaratsis. He said no that way. even an Amaratz, even a simple person, can access the Etzem. But he did not go ahead and say, stop learning, and just everyone should be an Amaratz and be a good person. I mean, so that's an obvious statement. Like I said, the Kukri Ku, it's not like the next year, everybody who was davening the Tefillah was saying Kukri Ku. The goal was to teach now that farm boy that he should learn Teda. I mean, that, that, let's just make that very clear. The Baal revealed there's etzem everywhere. And there's an etzem hanefesh no matter what. But the whole, I mean, all of Teda is based on, not that it should remain an etzem, but the etzem should come out the goli. That's why we use our faculties and we use our minds and we use our emotions. This is not a judgment. If a person is a tinik shenishba who didn't have an opportunity and so on, this is not about, this is not talking about reward now. Or we're not talking about credit. We're talking about the very fact what does Hashem want? He didn't just give us mitzvahs. He gave us also a teda. And he said there's a mitzvah to learn teda and to understand teda. So with all the milos of the etzem, you can't take away from all that, which is, that's also part of the plan. To say teda alone without mitzvahs, obviously is also not complete. And to say a person can do a mitzvah without any gilui, is there any mila? Obviously, maestro ikir. There are many people who do things just by action. But it's not a contradiction. I have a question. Um, it's 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 very philosophical and esoteric, but I, I'm just trying to abstract even more from this or to something more simple. Can we say that the the the, the power of, in particular, the Torah Shabbat that, that is revealing godliness in this lowest realm, in 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 in, in, pra in, in practical terms, like literally as it relates to the things that, that people do day to day. Um, that the revelation of godliness is it, it's not as though like you do a mitzvah and, and you you manage the rules of the laws of shabbos perfectly and, and all of a sudden you see god you don't i mean you you, you know what you're doing is, is holy but um it's not like you can see godliness per se um but rather it's the notion of discerning the 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 mirror of like what's right and what's wrong, and and also the idea of truth, that the 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 revelation of and the, and the implementation of 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 Torah and Torah Shabbat in particular takes things in this world and, and classifies them as as uh, as holy or not holy, and that that is a revelation of godliness right there. And by teaching us 
what's right and what's wrong per se. And let's say what's true and what's not true to say something that is right that you should do is true and something that you shouldn't do is false in the sense that it doesn't lead to any good end. So that this, you have this notion of Torah sort of like shining a flashlight in the world to reveal what's right, what's wrong, what's true, what's not true. And that process itself is a revelation of godliness. Absolutely. I've said it many times. It's it's, it's, just, it's real pshat what he says in this mimer. He said at length, that's what yeah. Torah is. It illuminates. I use the example as cosmic headlights, a lighthouse. Um, there are many terms you can use. The world is a dark world. We don't know what's right and wrong. And that's exactly what called birud means clarity. To find yes. that clarity. Yeah. It's exactly. So what you're saying is, I mean, you're saying it's, if, if now you got it, fine. But this is exactly what we've been learning. I mean, what you're saying is exactly what we've been learning the last uh, almost ten pages. So yeah, I, absolutely. No, I thought. Yeah, I, I thank you. I, I, I don't see this philosophical at all. I, I see it exactly what we learned. I use that example, like a light shining in dark. Teira Eir is an illuminating light. Now, the mitzvah is the implementation of that. Once you know what's right and wrong, then it's not just enough to know. Now you have to go do it. Now that you learned, let's say Hilchas Shabbos or Hilchas Pesach, for that matter. Now you go ahead and do it. Erev Pesach comes, here are the laws, and not based on those laws of Teira, Eir, you now implement it in the Ner Mitzvah, you, you light the candle. As we're going to learn what the Ner Mitzvah does shortly, that it actually lights the candle of the Teira Eir is going to be actualized through the Mitzvahs. That is absolutely the case, yeah. Which is the next Thank part you. of what we're going to learn now. And it's also what the Teira Eir said, the al Maimer, where he said that though Teira is Teira Eir, Ikri is Seidosan, of Teda, the words of the Alter Rebbe was mitzvahs. Okay. Any other questions before we continue? Eira Teda is a nechaz or mischaber be mitzvah. He called out Teda shalafneinu. Hein Teda shemgsava shalapay ikram v'seidosun he be mitzvahs. Where are you this reading? Be, that's going to be the second half of what we're going to learn now. I'm reading in Torah Eir, Lamed Ches Dalet, 38D. The Alter uh, Rebbe's mind. Uh -huh. um, this goes hand in hand. Remember, the Alter Mitla Rebbe is explaining the Alter Rebbe's Maimer. So bringing it is really very fitting. I mean, the um, Mitla Rebbe is explaining literally everything that it says there. There are many ideas from the Mitla Rebbe that if you go back to the Alter Rebbe's Maimer, you see now what the Alter Rebbe meant. We reviewed a part of those earlier when we spoke about Teir uh, Shavapen, Nezikin, how it comes down all the way into Nezikin Rabbi Yehuda. It's interesting. Some things that Mitla Rebbe actually quotes from the, from the Alter Rebbe, some things he doesn't quote, but he definitely explains. So this piece is all, the, the Mitla Rebbe is the one that asked the question. But if you really look at it, he's explaining the Alter Rebbe. This whole discussion is explaining what the Alter Rebbe says, the difference between Teir and Mitzvah on 38C, and D, and then later again in the beard on page 39 uh, D. But we're going to learn more about this now. I'll, I'll go over it more in detail. 39 B and, D, and, and, and C and D, yeah. Okay. Are there any other questions on this topic? Okay, so let's move on. Okay, so we're in the bottom of the new paragraph on bottom of page 417. Pages can be found at imbase.com. So it says like this now. He's going to take us back now even earlier. Remember, at the end of the day, the mimer is a well-rounded mimer. It's going to circle back now to their mitzvah and their Hashem Nishma Sodom, how that comes into play here. Because we explain Teir Eir, and we understand the mile of Teir Eir. But it does say Ner Mitzvah, and it also says Ner Hashem Nishma Sodom, that, uh, that the Nisham of a person is a Ner Hashem. So it's true, he said earlier, that's just Ner, Neri, and there's a higher level of Avayi Yigiyah Choshchi, which is Teda. But now he's going to bring us back. So before he spoke about uh, Teda Eir, to go back, that was Teda Eir started 
on page 402. Before that, you spoke about Ne'er Mitzvah. Remember, the Ne'er that consists of three things, the wick, the oil, and the light. So he's going to explain now what this really means, now that we know what Torah it is. So now, going back to the Ne'er, the Ne'er is, has the wick, together with the oil, the fuel, and that creates oil. And we learned from the Tzemach Tzedek, and I think the Rebbe Rashab too, and Ayin Beis, they can learn it two ways, if you recall, I discussed. You could say Ner Mitzvah has all three, has oil, or you could say the Ner Mitzvah has the first two, the wick and the light and the oil, and the oil is created by Teda. But either way, the Teda Ed is higher than Ner Mitzvah, even if Ner Mitzvah has light of its own. From the Mitla Rebbe's Maimer, and the Mitla Rebbe also earlier suggested these two options. Here, it seems that he's speaking according to the second option, that the Ne'er is not, does not have light without Teda. But there are, as I said, in other places around this Maimarim that speak that there is also that Mitzvah has some light of its own. Here, he doesn't address that here, but he did address it earlier. I think it's important to note because at the end of the day, when you do a Mitzvah, you can't say there's no light at all. It's just not the light of Teda, not the Er Atzmi and the whole uh, elaborate. There is something. But 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 the deal here, ner mitzvah tereir is mashma that without tereir you don't have light. So clearly he's talking about the higher level of light, or it may be all of all light. There's two ways you can explain it based on the previous the mamarim that I quoted, especially some achzadik mitlerem, and I think also in Ayin Beis he alluded to it. But bottom line is we're going back now to the three components of a ner that he spoke about earlier, earlier on pages. So mitzvahs began on page, um, bottom of page 390. We talked about mitzvahs. And you go back even earlier, you talked about Ner Hashem, Nishma Sodom. That goes back all the way to the beginning of the Mimer almost. Which takes us back to 374 or even earlier maybe. Yeah, even earlier. Wow. The Maimer began at 361. Okay, so let's now. After all the above, Yuvana Inyan Hanal, we understood that Inyan Hanal, that what? Bener Mitzvah, Bener Hashem Nishma Sodom. The discussion about the candle that is the mitzvah and the candle that is the soul of man, the Gimel Dvarim Shebehen, the three elements that, they, that it's, it's comprised of. Shemen, oil, fuel, upsila, and the wick, and the light that it creates. So he's going to now bring it back to that and tie it all together. So he says like this, the primary igniting, the, pri the primary lighting of the fire, of the candle, is that the, that the light gets ignited how how what what feeds that light? What causes it to burn? Aideshashev that it draws, umachla, and it consumes the shemen, the oil, shenimsha bepsila, that is drawn into the wick. So the wick we learned is like the mamutza. It's a wick, let's say, of cloth, of, of thread, whatever the wick is made of. It in turn is drawing the oil, and that's what causes the fire to burn. The more oil you have, the more it feeds into the wick, the more fire will burn. And we learned earlier that the psila is like an intermediary, interface here. Because if you only had the oil, you can't really light, light the oil. You only had the wick, obviously there's no fuel. It'll burn out quickly. So the key is to have the psila, the proper measure of the psila to draw slowly, like he said, slowly and deliberately in a very uh, a very um, calm fashion. And that's where you have a burning flame. Now, we learned, just to sum up before we read on, he's relying that we already learned it, remember, that in the Ner Hashem Nishma Sodom, the wick is the divine soul that enters into the animal soul. is immersed into the intelligence and human intelligence of the oil of the animal soul 
The animal soul on its own, the oil, could be used for other purposes. The chokma of the nefesh abamis could be used for its own self-interest. But here, what's happening is you're transforming that oil of the animal soul's intelligence to be directed towards the wick, be drawn into the wick of the divine soul, essentially divine soul educating, training, and and tapping the, the fuel of the animal soul to fuel the divine soul's love for God. So it becomes, And that will create the light. Till now we've learned that that light is the light of the fiery passion of Ahafta. We're now going to learn, as he says in the Alter Rebbe's Maimer, and, specific, and also here, he's going to say that that air ultimately is the air of Tater. But how is it fed? It's fed through what he's going to learn now. We're going to discuss how this works, both in the Neshama and in the Mitzvah. Because the Mitzvah, he also said similarly, the Mitzvah, the Wick, was explained in several different ways, but essentially it's the Rats and the Elyon that manifests within the physical objects which is every mitzvah is made up like the, like, uh, the mitzvah of tzitzis in the wall or the mitzvah of tefillin in the parchment. And that, that, in, that in turn is fulfilling is God's will. And in the Alter, in the Ayin Bezi explained on page 1352, he said there's two aspects to it. One is that that transforms the world, the physical world, as opposed to the Nefeshachis and Nefeshachabamis is between them. But now you're taking the physical world of demon tzemeh in this case like tzemer, the wool or, or the cloth, and you're turning it into divine light. And in addition, he said, a mitzvah also has this gula pratis, this gula, miyuchedas, I should say, the unique feature that it helps refine the animal soul. This is what the Alter Rebbe said in Teir Er, we learned that. And I'm going to learn it now as well. So all of that is what the mitzvah adds. So a neshama without a mitzvah can do it to some extent, but a mitzvah gives it a tremendous more power because it's God's will. So in other words, a human being could be moral and can do right things, but without the mitzvah, it only goes that far. The mitzvah is, is, is far more um, in, in, intense and far more divine because it's the divine will and pleasure. And then we'll get to the Torah er shortly. So now he's going back to what we learned about these three things in the neshama. So what did he say? Dehine, the pasha the shena the krishma, in the first pasha of krishma, which we learned about after shema yisrael, which he called the contemplation of yehudi law yehudi tata, and the union of the two, the union of the divine with existence, that everything in existence is really divine. That contemplation baruch shem leads to vahafta sashem lekecha v'chol avavcha. With all your heart, which is Lavavcha two bases, Shu Bebez Lavavis, with both sides of your heart, with both compartments of the heart, the Yetzatev, the Yetzarada, next page 418. The Yetzatev on the right side of the heart, the Yetzarada on the left side of the heart. So we're talking about the joining together to love God. Shahu, which is which is about Lahafik Gam Leva Khumri. To transform also the the grass or the chumri, the the raw part, shemole taivas ra'as, that on its own is filled with all kinds of negative desires, or he calls it evil desires, depends on how you touch ra'as, but definitely negative or selfish desires. So you want to transform that to vahafta as Hashem instead of loving the physical desires of this world that the animal soul would love on its own, the Yetzirah, you're transforming it. The Yetzirah sheikhin is gabr l'chol ra. Let me read it right. Lev chom yishamol yitavis rois the Yetzirah sheikhin is gabr l'chol ra and the Yetzirah is, is, uh, overwhelms and, and wants to dominate everything that's negative and ra, evil. So all that should be Yehufach, Cheshech Le'er, Veralatev. That the darkness should be transformed to light and the negative to good, the evil to good. So that same very animal soul that on its own would be pursuing its own pleasures is now being redirected and transformed to pursuing godliness. 
Love Hashem, love, love Hashem b'chol levavcha. To love God with all your heart, meaning both parts of the heart. Afila b'yetzahara. Even with the yetzahara. Even in or with the yetzahara. So that is what the Pasha Vahafta teaches us. And how do we get to that? So we learned also earlier. Vizehu. How do we achieve that level? This is after the contemplation of the divine soul in Shemach. In a way, not just with the Seichel of the Nefesh of the Keys, but also in a way that, that can explain it to human intelligence. We learned this earlier as well as in, in the Alter Rebbe's Maimed. So it's not just Nefesh of the Keys, it's understanding God in it, but in a way that also the, divine, the animal soul can understand it. Or what he calls it Seichel Anushi, which is the oil. The Seichel Anushi, human intelligence. And understand what? The Yechud law, the Seva of Mamala. In that higher level of unity, where the divine is everything, both seva, but seva v'mamala, which is basically the transcendent divine and the imminent, which really is referring to probably the combination of yichud elon, yichud tato, dasan and das tachn. He doesn't say it explicitly here, but he's going to say it soon. He definitely said it earlier. So this is actually, if you remember, this is where the ayin base concluded after 10 pages of elaborating on this contemplation of the, of the divine soul and, and ultimately with the goal of transforming the animal soul. The Rebbe Rashab never got back to the end of the effect on the animal soul. He stopped with the, his bonus. But it all began with his bonus of the Nefesh Alikis that in turn will educate and train the animal soul. And this we did learn. If you recall, I said we're... Ayin Bey stops is basically a little earlier, approximately, if I remember the pages, I think it was around, um, I think around page 384 is the last place where Ayin Bey cites. But 384 on, he does conclude that it affects the animal soul. 384 in this Amitla Rebbe's Maimon. Let me just look, because I marked it up in Ayin Bey's. The last place that he refers to um, is Shimpei Bey's actually, 382, the Mitla Rebbe's Maimur, but I think it may even be all the way to 384. Okay, something like that. But bottom line is that this is the process. Okay. So what he's doing is really coming back and summing up what we learned earlier, but he's going to now tie it together with what we've learned here. Let me let me let me just pause if anybody wants anything to clarify, because I've been reading for a while. Even though he's been middle, he wants to go back now to the nair, how this applies to the candle. Any questions? Any questions? Okay. Kosov Lamaila, as was written above, Shazehu, meaning in this moment earlier he spoke about, this that we just described, this process of the divine soul contemplating on the divine unity and the way that they're also understood by human intelligence and that will awake and that will inspire, that will uh, stimulate and arouse the love for God, even by the Eitz Sahara. He says, this is what we spoke about earlier. Shazel Kaloyan the Nefesh Abamis. This is the Kaloyan. This is the consuming of. And the word Kaloyan, like he said before, Tichla, of the animal soul, so the animal soul is not just following its own life, its own its own interests, it's being consumed, the kiloyan, like the kiloyan of the shaman, to become the eira leki, the divine light, which is the light of love, the love of after Hashem, shehu kamoi Hashemen, shekolo v'nichol ba'ir, like the oil that gets consumed and encompassed in the light, through the wick, which is the divine soul. So that's the muscle of, that's why I use the word ner, because that's what the ner accomplishes. This is the transformation of darkness to light. Which, includes, which means that also the animal soul 
with its natural um, impulses or natural emotions and natural feelings, like an animal, behema, which is always its feelings are about its own needs, now is being transformed. Yumshach should not follow its own behemoth inclinations, but rather Yumshach should be drawn achar like the like the like the oil being drawn to the wick should follow the eira leki la'ava to love v'yira and to reverence the bitla mitzias mamish in the state of total bitla mitzias exactly like the oil it no longer has its own identity it's becoming fuel for a light in this case the light and flame of divine love and reverence even though it says in the passage bahafta sasham lakha doesn't say yira so the Alter Rebbe already in chapter 18 and 19, Tanya explains how Ava includes also Yira. So, but that's why he's adding Yira here, because it gives the full picture. It's not just Ava, it's also reverence Yira. Okay. But who? Hashemin, and this is the oil of the animal soul. It doesn't have any light. Interesting he's saying that expression because the oil is being created when the oil gets consumed. The oil itself is not light. Is he trying to hint to the fact that a mitzvah does not have light of its own? I don't know. But let me just read it. Hashem is she'en boy oil. does not have light. The yum shech achra psila. It, um, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. She'en boy oil, yum shech achra psila. And it's drawn... Following the psila, the the the, the wick, li is kola v'nishav be'ed. That being that it's in a state that it becomes consumed, v'nishav, and drawn be'ed into the light. So essentially, it's the oil through the wick that's becoming the light. It's literally being transformed to light. The oil on its own wouldn't be light, but through this process, this avveda, when you light it. The oil is becoming light through following that is drawn into the wick of the of the divine soul. So the mushal works perfectly. That's the transformation of animal soul on its own would be shemen. It has intelligence, but not uh Hashem, in this case Avas Hashem. And it and 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 now you're transforming it into a fuel that is going to be completely consumed. And when the oil is depleted, what did it produce? It produced light. The oil became light, basically. So that's a transformation of bitl v'mitziyas mamish, because nothing remains of the oil. The oil as it is in its own form, that is. Okay. So it's not a revelation. It's it's an actual transform. In other words, like you were talking before uh, about actually exposing the light, like uncovering it. This is actually a transformation of a thing yeah. in. Like, for sure. Thank you. Yeah. He actually said earlier about Tere Shebik Sav and Tere Shebal Peh, he said something similar. He said Tere is, is just revealing the divine light even in a place of darkness. And it's Tere Shebal Peh that transforms darkness to light. He said that's a Chidush Gomer. Here we're going even further because this is not just learning Tere Shebal Peh. This is actualizing that the animal soul should actually love God. That even the animal soul can love God. And by the way, when you're learning these Maimarim and learning Chassidus and you're enjoying it, it's also your animal soul that's enjoying it, or else I don't think you'd be here. So there is an element of this happening right now. When your animal soul can appreciate this, it's not just that you're, you're putting your animal soul to sleep and deferring to your divine soul. Chassidus explains these ideas in a way that the animal soul also appreciates and can have pleasure in it. Amazing. So we're living, uh, we're living uh, specimens, uh, <laughs> playing out this uh, very idea. Okay. Now how is going to bring it back to Teda Eir? So, an another dimension here. But any other questions? Anybody want to ask anything? Mm -hmm. And this we may need to go back to the Mimer of the Alter Rebbe to fully understand the flow here. But let's read it first inside here and see. Hi there, 
Sorry, I have a quick question. Um, yeah. Just the last um, uh, comment he says, but who Hashem and She'en Bo, or referring to the um, to the um, animal, sorry, the yeah, the intellect of the of the animal, that's the fuel. Um, and it says that there's no light within it. So, I mean, he's just saying that it's, it, it's Klippus Noga. I mean, it's, it, 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 it itself is not, doesn't have any holiness of light. It's, it, it's, it's uh, fuel, meaning it can be transformed, like Robin just said. But in, in and of itself, there's no Kedusha in, 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 the, in the, the human intellect because it, it could be used for good, it could be used for bad, but it's not, there's no Kedusha in it itself. Um, isn't that, you said you think it might be referring to the mitzvahs, but it seems to me very, pretty clear, like what I just said. I, I don't, I guess my question is, I don't understand why you would say it's the mitzvah. It, to me, it just seems I didn't like say that. Mitzvah. Mitzvah. I said, I said, I said everything you said, and I said maybe also he's alluding to the mitzvah. I didn't say it is the mitzvah. It, it's, it's very obvious what it is. What he's saying is very straightforward. The shemen yeah. on its own is shemen. In the case of the animal soul, it's the animal soul's intellect, which can be used for anything. And when you light it in this way with the divine soul, its contemplation affects the animal soul. You're turning the intelligence of the animal soul, like we're doing when we learn Exodus here, into divine light, or in this case, divine love. That's for sure, Pshat. I was saying, is he maybe also hinting to Something connected to the mitzvah. That's all I meant. And how would it be connected to the mitzvah? That the mitzvah is what makes that reaction he, run, if you will? Because he says, you know, so strike it. If it's not, it's not. It's fine. So I said it to myself. It's not It's not so okay. important. Okay. I just wanted to understand the comment more, but that's okay. Yeah, okay. But, but no, if can it's we confusing, say that that's, not, that's not, that's not, it's all right. It's not, it's not um, not trying to drive that point home. It's just a thought that I had when I was reading it. Can we say, Rabbi Jacobson, that mitzvah makes it permanent? We didn't get the mitzvah Man. yet. Let's let's see where he's going with this. Right now, he spoke about Ner Hashem Nishma Sadam. Let's see how he's going to develop it. We're, we're still in the middle. He didn't finish the subject. He's going to get the mitzvahs shortly. And as I said, we're going to probably need to go back to the mime of the Alter Rebbe to just see how it all plays out, you know, the, all these elements. Right now, he's talking about the Nesham Nefesh, Lekis Nefesh, Shabamis, which was the beginning of the Alter Rebbe's Maimur without yet mitzvah. Now he's going to bring the Teira Eir into the picture because the Eir uh, now says like this. It says, Ach leheichan, hukola v'nichlo, ze.' So where is this uh, directed toward? When this Shemen, the oil of the animal soul, is now being directed and being feeding, being drawn into the wick. Into this light. Where is it going? Lehechon. The kola, it's being consumed. Venichlal ba'er zeh. In this light. So he says, Hine zeh ha'er ubchinus er detayr. This light that we're talking about is the light of Tayr. I know immediately you can ask the question, didn't you say it's the light of love and reverence? So let's see where he's going here before we get to that. That's why I said, I think we're going to need to look at the mime of the Alter Rebbe. But that's what he clearly says. So now that you're saying, okay, before the oil was just oil. Now the oil has become consumed and being encompassed in the light. What light? Hazhechon. Where is it going? What is its ultimate destination, so to speak? He says that's in the Tera Dafka. Like it says, So even though Ner Hashem Nishma Sodom, and that Ner includes the oil that's transforming the animal soul, but the oil, the actual oil, which is higher than Ner, is Kamesh Kosev Betera Er, Sheba Er Zed Dafka, Meir Meir De Ein Sof Atzmei. Or Meir Ma'ir, the Ein Sof Atzmei. Meir Ma'ir or Ma'ir? I think Ma'ir. You could say both, actually. Meir Ma'ir, the Ein Sof Atzmei, or Meir Ma'ir, the Ein Sof Atzmei. Not sure. I think Ma'ir sounds more correct in, technically, but it may also be hinting to Ma'ir. Not sure. But either way, remember we learned that Teir Ha'ir has something that nothing else has. 
even the neshama does not have. Because the neshama comes down and gets concealed in this world. We discussed this at length, that the neshama is elikusha nasi yesh, that the neshama is subject to concealment. That the etzema neshama remains intact always. But the neshama goes through, like we learned, neshama shenesate bi tahiri, ata barasa, ata yitzat, ata nafakta bi, ata meshamna bi kirbi, and the neshama on its own needs teda mitzvahs to be able to elevate. That's why it's like the light of the, it's like the eye. It needs light. Teda is light. Even though Teda goes through Ishtalshul, but it retains its very essential nature. It always remains Teda Sashem. Never Makabal Tumah, like we learned, it is not in any way assume any of the properties of this world. And Neshama does assume, especially the lower levels of the soul that come down below, like we learned earlier, it's even affected by the events and experiences of the body, the Neshama, the lower levels. So here he's saying that, so, so, so ultimately, so that's coming I said you could say both you could say or both are possible no, I think not not why not why I think it's you say more. from the oil okay maybe in Hebrew Should you can say that, I don't that can, if he wants to say that it's mayo from the oil, you should say mayo oil in strength of Atman. Why can't you say mayor from the oil? It's not the oil itself, it's mayor from there. It's, it's originally. I, I think you could say both ways, but either way, I'm fine with the moir because he did say before that it's coming from the moir of Teda, uh, which is the highest level, the source. But either way, the bottom line is Teda has Teda air, the features of complete light, complete divine revelation. And that's where the ultimately this uh, in the air of Teda. So ultimately it's being consumed in the air of Teda. What that means exactly, we need to spell out. What does that mean? We need to still spell out. What does it mean? That you're loving God but it's going even further than that. It's coming to connect through the Teda of Hashem. Is that what he's saying? Like we're going to say here, we're going to read on that after, after we say, of course, after... Um, uh, we're going to talk about and we're going to talk about mitzvahs. So I think it's all part of the Hemshech of Shema. Let's see how this goes. Kiyadua. Kiyadua, like it's known, and this was already addressed earlier. This was, he spoke about very explicitly on page uh, 408. That Eden Sof is not shaded, does not dwell anywhere but in the light of the Chok Mistima, the superconscious intelligent wisdom of Teda Dafke, like we learned at length earlier, because Teda is completely bottle. All it is is divine expression. That's the whole point of Teda. It's the divine expression that God gives us, essentially, basically a CAT scan or a picture or, a snap, or, or, or an image of himself. I don't want to use the word image, it's not the right word. A, a sense of him through Teda. So even though in Hashem, is it doesn't say it here, but Naim Bezi we spoke about, it. even a soul is a divine, but the soul goes like he says in the Geras HaKedah, Shimon Chav, the soul separated itself, meaning the soul did get, and at least on a Gilui level, it never gets disconnected from the Etzem, but on a Gilui level, the soul on its own could get separate, and therefore, in these Teda mitzvahs to reconnect. The Teda never gets separate. The Teda remains divine light forever. It could be a concealment that we don't internalize it. But it's always there and is never affected by the symptom like we learned. And that's where it is for Shada. The bitl of Teda like we learned earlier. Shemagala kol b'chinas helen v'cheshecha elyon kanal. This Teda, therefore, is mega, which reveals... All stay, all darkness, all concealments, and all darkness, Elyon, including the Elyon, meaning the symptom and everything that's ever concealed. Yosher's Cheshach Sisrei does not apply. The Teda is not subject to that. This Teda reveals the divine everywhere. So there's no such thing as the Cheshach Leyachshach She'en Boy Shine Mahus Klal, like we learned earlier, that Teda does not have any shift. There's no Shine Mahus. 
its personality remains intact exactly as it is above before the symptom as it is after the symptom. That there's no shift or change at all, even when the tater comes down lamata below the Dvarim Gashmim canal and manifests in physical matters below. Canal, like we learned, this was at length. This was a big part of understanding what Teda is. Now we understand why he elaborated so much because this is critical. To understand what Teda really is, you have to understand this level of Eir Atzmi, that the Teda just remains exactly as it is from above below. And that is ultimately where the Eir of the Ner, ner Hashem Nishma Sam, the Ner, including the Shemen of the animal soul being transformed, ultimately is being encompassed into this highest level of Eir. In other words, if you didn't have Teda Eir, you could say, the neshama could reach to a certain point of light. The ner is ignited in the sense where the divine soul contemplates on divine unity. That divine unity in turn is explained to the animal soul in human intelligence, but you only reach that far. To reach this level of erein sof atzmei, mama is connecting to the divine. You could say, no, you don't can't go that far. But teda er allows us to take it there because teda Hashem is giving us teda. So when we do our part, meaning our effort from below, Shema Yisrael and Aveda of Tefillah, and we get to Vahavta Hashem Alekecha, then Hashem says, now your light is going to be encompassed into the higher light of Teda Eir. All the way which uh, uh, to experience the Eir Ein Sof Atzmei, Moir Ein Sof Atzmei, like he said. So just telling us how high we can actually reach, that's the Lehechon. Where does it ultimately go to? Which explains a critical line that I pointed out several times when we learned the Alter Rebbe's Maimer. Now I understand it. I mean, I understand it much better. The Alter Rebbe said when he finished Neir Hashem Nishma Sodom on 38C, uh, he said at the end of the paragraph, Zehu Neir Shal Anashama, Shi Bistbonus Nefesh Alekis Atzma. This is the candle of the soul that comes, that is the contemplation of the soul on its own. He didn't yet bring mitzvah, near mitzvah, and teda it. And he made it clear that therefore the neshama can reach a certain place, but it cannot reach this level of earth. And then he goes on to explain what a mitzvah is, what a mitzvah does, and then further what a teda does. That teda leads us all the way back to lifting our symptom completely intact, which is so critical because this essential theme of Ayim Bayes, especially the second half, was the big question he asked in the middle of volume two, can a, a post-symptom reality experience pre-symptom consciousness? Because the whole post-symptom reality is predicated on a symptom. So you would say the parsa, the symptom, and later the parsa, create a certain un, 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 uh, unpierceable schism mm. that you can't pierce because the symptom is there. And the, and the answer was absolutely by transforming the symptom and realize that it's all part of God's Revelation, and then ultimately later talking about the transformation of the symptom Hela Ma'atzmi. So all of that came to lead that you can actually experience pre symptom and post symptom Teda provides that ability like no other. Because as much as we can do it, Momata Lamaila, it's still like he explained in Ayim Bayes in volume two. He said, when you go from the bottom up, you only go that far, still with your strength. However, when you also get and combined with that Teir Air coming from the top down, Mamayla Lamata, including Teir Shabbat Peh in the Mamat Lamayla in Mamayla Lamata, that leads you all the way to Eir Ein Sof Atzmei, which is far higher than Mitzvah. But, well, we didn't talk about Mitzvah yet. Higher than the Neshama on its own, and we're going to be, of course, higher than Mitzvah as well, as we learned. So that's what I think is what, what is going on here. That really is explaining far higher revelation, of course, that Teir provides the Teda Eir. Had Hashem not yes. given us Teda, God forbid, we would be able to do mitzvahs if we had mitzvahs. Um, but, but, but the neshama can never reach these levels on its own. Even though the neshama, once it is ignited, like we learned in Ayin Beis, then it can reach places that are even higher than Teda. Like the Eir Hariya. But if but first needs the Siyua, it needs the Eir Teda, Teda Eir, to provide us to be able to reach, first of all, these highest levels, and then We'll talk about even higher, getting to the Hela Ma'atzmi that an Ashamba can reach, which is even higher than Teda Eir. But we'll talk about that later. I don't want to jump the gun yet here. Okay. This is all after the Neshama is coming down, because the Shosho, Neshama is higher than Teda. 
But it's coming down in order to reach all of this. Number one, mitzvah also brings you a mile from what you could reach. But the Torah oil brings you to the moral arts more. But this is only after the symptom and after uh, all of that Misham is here. Yeah, but the fact is we do live here. So that's not just a but. It just happens to be the whole reality. This is why uh, yeah, if you were living in the Shadish, you could argue you don't need anything. But we're talking about down here, obviously, and that's where the, yeah, the that soul... Is the I mean, we yeah. wouldn't need to be learning chassidus. We wouldn't need to be learning this if we were the neshamas as they are in their root. Um, can I ask anyway, a question? I don't think you need much proof. The fact of the matter is, look at our lives. How With all the neshama has, look how difficult, even with Teirah Mitzvah, how difficult is Avedis Hashem? Tell me. Even with all. That's why I don't like to get the theoretical about the shadish. Fact of the matter is, life is difficult. Avedis Hashem is difficult. We're living in a dark world. With all these resources, it's still quite challenging. But we're, we're laying out the resources here. Yeah. This but, is what Hashem wants, that here, down here, like you said. But, you but that's, all, that's the only thing that matters down here. Everything up there is irrelevant, frankly, unless it can be implemented down here. That's the whole point of this. Yeah. Yeah. My my question is um well it's I wanted to understand how you're touching some language in this the last sentence you read of uh, of the of the Mithla Rabbi. Um he says because uh Kiya Dua Sha'inorin so Shora Rock but or I think he's the Chokhman Stima, is that correct? Yeah. The Torah? Okay. Yeah. So okay. So my question is um say you have um Amarats or Anash, so, so just a simpleton, uh, a yid who hasn't studied any Torah, but they're a good person. Somehow, you know, they're they're they they, they don't they don't they know it's not right to lie, they know it's not right to steal, and and, and let's say they know it just because it's a, a civil, common civil knowledge and law. Um, they don't even know the Ten Commandments. <laughs> um, that. This I'm just wondering here. There, 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 it must be a revelation of um, the the orain self, godly light. When that person um, behaves that way, follows, call it it's intuitive, whatever. Some of you know our laws we have are you can derive with uh, human intellect, um, and so this is suggesting unless you know that it happens to be Torah, there's no revelation of orain self. But that that. Is that can that be what it means? In other words, it, it, it says short at rock the or the chokhmah stima the Torah. So it's saying only with Torah can you know that can there be a revelation of divine light? And that seems a little too n- limiting. No, I wouldn't. I, I didn't translate it that way. Ein and Sof he says right before Ein and Sof Atzme. He's talking about the purest levels of Ein and Sof. Of course, Ein and Sof comes down even in a stone in this world, but it's very concealed. When you want to have Eren Sof in its full glory, untouched, undiluted, that's only in Chach Mistema. That may be, but it, do you have to know Torah for that revelation to occur? That, that is that's Torah. That, that is Torah. Well, that's like saying, um, can a person live their lives and just do good act- deeds? They could, but they're not going to have this level of experience. Mm-hmm. Understood. Thank you. But in you terms of beer, you have to also keep, you keep, you also keep in mind. You have to also keep in mind. It's still a, it's still a beer. If they're still behaving who's, properly, who's, I, I said the kukri ku of that child that didn't know any Torah is uh, yeah. pierced to heaven more than all the, the scholars. We're not talking about reward and credit here. We're talking about the facts of why you need teda. What's a mitzvah? The Rebbe, the middle Rebbe, is laying out. Everything you need. God gave us the Torah. It's not some new innovation here. The Torah was given for a reason. Why didn't God just give us mitzvahs? There's a reason. Torah er, and the pasuk says it. Ner mitzvah Torah er. Er of the Torah is greater than the ner of the mitzvah in this context. So mm-hmm. we're not talking here about personal experience. Look, the fact of the matter is that there are many Jews today that were born in homes called the Tinik Shenishba, right? Bena Akum. They were born in homes in captivity. They never got a Jewish education. They don't even know what Torah means. They've never studied Torah. 
That's a whole other story. Why God would put them in a situation like that. They don't even have the opportunity. We're not talking about someone who knows everything about Torah and chooses not to learn Torah, God forbid. So that's a whole other thing. God's mysterious calculations. Is it a Gilgal? Are they just finishing a job? Remember, they also have the Swiss Ovis. They're standing on the shoulders of the previous generations. It's all accumulative. I'm not, this is not, we're, this is not a mimer that's talking about personalizing this in uh, individuals where they stand in their learning of Torah. There are big Talmud Chachamim that are tremendous scholars, but it could be came easy to them. There are people who struggle to learn one word in Torah. comes harder. Which is greater in the eyes of God? So look in Tanya, he talks about what Avoida is. We're not discussing that at all. Here he's talking about the, the very picture of what mitzvah is, what nesham is, what Torah does. Every person now has to apply that in their level. You know, some people are going to be, it's not like saying someone who knows a lot more Torah is, def, is, is, is necessarily reaching higher level of Eirei and Sof because the fact of the matter is it could be a person who had, was struggling more and God appreciates that struggle. Like Tshuva, for example, can just uh, take a person express through all these levels that a tzaddik may not even be able to reach, like we know. So we're not discussing that. He's talking here, what is Torah and what is its role? Now, when a, it's the, in, in the Chiv of Limadat Torah itself, there's also, there's people who are mechuyiv to learn Torah all the time. Torah Somenase, Rashbi and Rabbi Yehud and all the others, they were Torah, they learned Torah all the time. But it says in the Gemara, Harbi Asik Rashbi, Velay also be other. Many people tried to do what Rashbi did, but they couldn't. So for them, learning Perek Echad Shachris, learning a chapter in the morning, a chapter in the evening, they're fulfilling their mitzvah. People in Kolel are learning more. People who are business people have their shiurim. So we're not discussing now that is already a matter of how each person's responsibility. We're talking about what Teda is and, when, and, and what Teda does in your life. And generally speaking, if a person just, for example, fulfills the Rebbe's Mifzayim, his com campaigns, like, my, like mitzvahs, actions, and never learns the Rebbe's Torah, so what's going to be his experience? Yes, he's doing the Rebbe's will. He's fulfilling the mission, the shlichus, but there's lacking a lot. There's lacking a lot in his own life. It's not radiating. It's not completely internalized. Obviously, also his impact, impact on others. When someone learns and learns with their constituents and so on, we know what learning does. It changes the whole climate. But that doesn't take away from actions either. So it's, uh, it's, here he's laying out the dynamics of what Teda is. But it's, I mean, he, it's to me, it's like this is how you reach transcendence here if that's what you want to do. I mean, you know, it doesn't take away from other people, but this is an experiential kind of a thing, I think, that you are actually able to experience that level of. Exactly. That, and, yeah. and, exactly. And look, even when you're dealing with people who are not necessarily capable or have the time to learn all day, you still want to infuse Torah wherever you can because it just changes. It changes how you think, how you feel. It's, it's internal. Action is critical. But at the end of the day, even if you put on film with someone, the best would be afterwards, okay, now let's sit down and study and let's learn. If you have the time, obviously, and so on. Because if you really want to change a person, it's usually going to be through Torah. Mitzvahs can get the ball rolling. And mitzvah gereres mitzvah. Mitzvah triggers a neshama, it wakes you up. It gets it going. It's like a tremendous um, trigger. But you want the mitzvah to lead to more. And, and again, it's not, it's not about judgment for sure, not, not about reward as well. It's more the general context of it all. Yeah, no, thank you. It was a wonderful explanation. I, I, and I, I wasn't trying to necessarily even um, get into the personal experience. And I obviously, well, I, mean, I, I understand what Robin said to me is obvious. Um, but I think what I was getting to is the larger let me put it this way, broader eschatological implications of someone who behaves, meaning that in terms of bringing, that making this world a dira, okay, and bringing Mashiach, that in terms of, if a, if a Yid behaves properly, even if they don't know any Torah, they don't lie, they don't steal, they respect other people. And okay, they're not, obviously, they don't learn Torah, they're not going to be able to do details like putting on tefillin or whatever. Um so th that itself is a limitation, but let's just focus on what they do do correctly. I guess my point was in the big picture, forget about the individual. They're still engaged in a bureau, but this are thing is- Are you making is, a I point mean, or you're asking a question? 
Well, I'm, the question is, it says, She'ain or ain't so sure right only the or okay. the Chokhmah Stim of the Torah, you know? Do you see what I'm saying? No, because I thought I explained it very well. You did. And, but, you did. You took it like 98% of the way. I'm just saying. I mean, did. What do you mean? The, 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 why don't you ask? There's a spark of the divine in every fiber of existence. So there you have. Erein Sof is an, even in a stone, even in a frog. Mm -hmm. So is that what you're asking me? What is that? How no. could you say? So the answer is very simple. Erein Sof, like if you go back, I, I referred back to page 409. If you go there, you'll see on page 408, the opening of the paragraph, he discusses at length why Eirein Sof is shared only in Chachmi. He says it in Tanya chapter 18 and 19, chapter 35, and here it's elaborated upon in number, very many places. Why does it say, this is a statement from Zayar and from Kisra Rizal. Eirein Sof is shared in Chachmi and from Chachmi it spreads to the others. So you're well, asking me, the question. Me... That's a, a, Erein Sof, in its, in, in its fullest sense of the word, all other spheres have a certain finite dimension of the divine. They don't have Erein Sof in its full glory. And mm -hmm. Chachma is, because of its bittel, it becomes a channel for Erein Sof. Uh -huh, uh -huh. I, I guess, and you've, you've answered it, like, uh, you have answered it, but I'm saying, the, 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 the simplest way to ask my question is, can there be a bearer if someone doesn't know any Torah? I told you, the guys who said kukuriku, and yeah. he pierced the heavens more than the great scholars did. Well, and he and he and he and he annulled a a, a, yigzera, a decree. One little okay. act, of course. One little child saying a, a pasuk doesn't have to understand everything, can change the world. That's okay. not what he's talking about here. No, I he's know. He's talking about the mile of teira eir of teira eir eir ain't soft gilui elakus in the fullest sense of the word, not. The, the power, uh, you know, the power of of creating change, that can be done many ways. That's why I explained, Tinuk Shanishba, you never know what a person can achieve in one little detail. It's not what he's discussing here. Understood. Thank you. People that okay. are studying payroll, of course, the, the not everyone is reaching the oil and stuff in the memorial. This is like you said, this is the idea of Torah oil. It's a pen, how you're studying Torah Yeah, but and, it does say, Kola Kedah V'Sheinu B'Tayr HaKadosh Baruch Hu Kedah V'Sheinu K'Negdeh. Everybody has an element where you learn Torah of this level. That's why, in addition to mitzvahs, we need Torah. There's mitzvahs, there's Torah Aveda Gmilz Chasadim. Torah for everybody is Mamshich Eisi Atem Lekhim. The level of it, obviously, is different levels, but the concept of Teda is that it introduces Eir into your life. More than a mitzvah and more than a neshama, a higher level of Eir, I should say, this higher level. This doesn't mean that a neshama cannot bring light. You see that all the time, you know, and and the same thing with a mitzvah. We're talking about this level of Eir Ein Sof Atzmei, or Moir, that he's mm -hmm. talking about. And uh, in that full picture, like, I, I, that's why I elaborated. Did anyone look up the Sikh Chelik Tazayan or Chelik Chofei that I mentioned? Probably I not. Might I, I might have. I don't remember to be honest. Okay, with but you. if so, I would recommend learning. This is discussed in many places. What is the what Taylor brings into the picture? I, I yesterday I tried to give a a taste of it, but um, if you need more, by all means, study more and uh, keep exploring. And you, uh, no, you answered very well. It was very helpful. I mean, really, huh. you 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 hit my question from. Uh, many different angles. Thank you. Okay, so let's stop here, middle of page 418, right? Middle of 